Okay. We've got CP the franchise, NBA analyst, Knicks fan TV on the line. Uh, CP, good to have you on the show. I see you, don't, you, you, you dressed like an adult today. I can see that. Very good. How late did you stay up in your mom's basement watching uh, those gutty little Knicks lose to the, to the Lakers? That's what I want to know. For, first and foremost, Max, that the business attire is all about business because not only is CP the franchise, the content powerhouse, yes. I'm also a businessman. And the wrappings are coming off ah. the Knicks Fan TV documentary, which is set to debut next week. Get so make sure here, you guys really? look out for that on Knicks Fan TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just nice. wrapped you made up a documentary. The the Knicks fan TV documentary is on the way. Look out for it next Very week. Very good. Very but nevertheless, good. Max, one on one ninety nine in overtime. It was a tough night last night. I called the game last night. I was in my Marv Albert bag on uh, Knicks fan TV YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, just a tough game. The Knicks just could not close in crunch time and overtime. Derrick Rose and, and Julius Randle gave it their all to put the team on their backs. Didn't have a, uh, a, a a performance by the supporting cast of R.J. Barrett and Reggie Bullock. Knicks shorthanded. Just couldn't get the stops, wait, man. Wait, they wait, made wait, more wait. plays than we did. The Lakers didn't have LeBron James or Dennis Schroeder. Calm down with the short or, or Caruso. Calm down with the shorthanded well, for a second. Hold on. I want to get yeah. to something with you. Yeah. And then we have to move on to real basketball. We have to move off. <laughs> okay. Now, this is what I want to know, CP. Tom Thibodeau. Yeah. There's some guys. Maybe Mark Jackson falls into this category. Maybe Buck Showalter in baseball, who can change mm. the culture of your team and get you to a certain place. But then the belief, at least, among ownership and high levels of executives is now we need someone to get us to the next place. Now, Tom Thibodeau, yeah. is had, had, I think, is the coach of the year. But what's the criticism been of Tom Thibodeau throughout his career? He works them so hard and intensely in the regular season, they're gassed by the playoffs, right? Yeah. What I saw last night was a gassed Knicks team. They were, had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. You had yeah. Talon Horton Tucker running point for the Lakers, and they still couldn't get it done because when they hit the, put the pedal to the metal, there was no gas left. Julius Randle, Derrick Rose, nobody. They, they were out of gas. Yeah. Is that Thibodeau's fault? No, because as I said, we were shorthanded. We're missing Alec Burks and Emmanuel quickly, two major pieces yep, to this quickly, Knicks sure. offense. And when you talk about the way that Alfred Payton has struggled, especially in the second half of games, there's only so much minutes that Derrick Rose can go where he's truly effective. Those spot minutes in between the third and the fourth quarter would ideally go to a guy like Alex Burks that can still make plays for you on the perimeter and get you a bucket, get you to the free throw line. Emmanuel mm -hmm. quickly, he's a five, a flamethrower from the three-point line. Yes. So the absence of those two guys loom large. But that, that's not on Tibbs. Tibbs could truly be uh, the table setter for this team, but we won't know that until this team truly gets some more talent in here, and we'll see how far they can, they can go. Hey, yawn. No one cares about the Knicks. Listen, <laughs> are we going <laughs> to— <laughs> I like them. Quickly's good. He's a six-man type. Rose is yeah. a six-man type. Barrett's been shooting the ball well. He maybe is an all-star type, and Julius Randle is the kind of lower-level MVP candidate type. It, they don't quite have enough firepower, but maybe if they show a healthy enough culture and a good enough work ethic, some su real superstars are going to want to join yeah. the team. Maybe. That's in the future. Right now, right now, you have teams who already did that and, cre and, and paved the way for the superstars to join. The Lakers yeah. and the Nets. Let's start with the Lakers. Battle sure. of L.A., round one. I'm a Lakers fan, as you know, CP. I'm a reformed Knicks fan. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm Sell scared it. about that first round matchup with the Clippers. I would rather see them play the play in game. Even if they lose to Golden State or Trail, but you know, like Dame or, or Steph get hot. What can you do? Yeah. They ain't losing to the, to the Grizz or the Spurs again. Like after. And then they get a first round matchup with Phoenix. Oh, I like that. I like that as a Lakers fan. If I can say LeBron and AD are going to be healthy, better than walking into a first round buzzsaw with the Clippers and having to play my guys when they have a, like, like AD who has a groin issue right now in order to get there what about the battle of la what's that mean for the lakers battle of la is going to put a lot of pressure on the lakers man this clippers team is deep i love their roster I like their depth i don't like their lack of killer instinct and that's why i'm not so sure it'd be a bad move for the lakers to just go ahead win out and try to meet the clippers in the first round why number one the lakers defense is still tops in the league I think their defense is going to carry them. I'd give me LeBron and AD over Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Give me their top two superstars over the Clippers. And mm -hmm. how about this? They go on the road against the Clippers in the playoffs. They're not traveling anywhere. They're right. home every single game. They get to sleep in their bed. They go on the road against the Clippers. Clippers fans don't exist. They're like Nets fans. They're not putting fear in anybody. So I, I like the Lakers here. Number one priority, Max, they got to get healthy. Yep. They need Schroeder 
Who knows how what his conditioning is going to be post-COVID. Alex mm-hmm. Caruso left the Nick game early last night. He only played seven minutes. He's their most important right. perimeter defender. And AD, AD was very banged up yesterday. A groin injury for him. So the Lakers need to just get healthy as quickly as they can and then worry let the chips fall where they may. You know but I think the, the Clippers the should be okay for them? For is that all of a sudden the West doesn't look good. Suns haven't played well. Clippers haven't played well. Maybe the Lakers bacon is saved by that. Meantime, the most important player in the NBA right now is coming back tonight as well. And the reason I say James Harden is the most important player is because if he's healthy, if the big three is healthy and they have Harden, kiss this season goodbye every other team in the league. But if he's not, I don't think they get to the conference finals. I don't think KD and Kyrie, I think if James Harden doesn't play, the Bucks and the Sixers play for the Eastern Conference Championship. If James Harden is healthy, why even bother playing this postseason other than to watch the Nets put on a show? What do you think about Harden's, it's going to be a game time decision, what do you think about Harden's return? Oh, when Harden gets back, that offense is going to explode. I mean, you think about the fact that Kyrie Irving gave James Harden the keys to the castle, and for good reason. He's probably the best pick-and-roll ball handler in the league, whether it's a threat to score or a threat to pass. He's in the 71st percentile in points per possession as a pick-and-roll ball handler. Uh, Conversely, Kyrie Irving is in the 40th percentile. So James Harden's going to come in. He's going to be a way better decision maker. He's going to help them uh, defensive rebounding, and that's where the Nets have to come in and and, uh, rebound as a group. So I think he's going to help them there but offensively being a threat off the pick and roll it's going to open everything up for everybody including Kyrie, Katie, Joe Harris you name it when Harden gets back that pick and roll is going to be unstoppable and that's offense is going to be lethal now CP I like what you're wearing you got this stupid Knicks hat a little, off little you orange have, and blue a little orange I, and blue I, I, I don't see you got you have the suit on you know what I mean now you got to do yeah. something about the beard it's too you're not a player you're not, you're not, oh, no. what are you, what are you, no, no, what do you no. got a beard to hide no. some PEDs? What are you doing? Just take it <laughs> hey, down. Hey, yeah, you, you, you got a beard yourself. You, the, the, yeah, the but see how it's low? Loose. It's low. Well, I'm on the radio right now. This is your big break. This is, you're Listen, on, you're on ESPN this, Plus right now. You, you have national talent. We, now we have to give you Listen, a national look. Listen to that analysis you just broke out. It was spot on. As All is. Right. CP as the franchise. As is, Max. I would NBA be the analyst. best dressed man in Bristol by the current look. That's, that is just a, by the current that, look. That's uh, that's absurd. Now listen, CP, <laughs> that's absurd. But I like uh, <laughs> CP showed Ma. Can you show me something like this? And he showed her a picture <laughs> of my work. I think it's Tom Ford. Could you make something like this? Hold on, let me just take, let me see. What I can. All right, look, CP. Let me yeah. let me ask you something yeah. about the Warriors. I was arguing with Kendrick yeah. Perkins about this on First Take today. It's a very big time show. Very big show. Huge. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big star, CP, on ESPN, and I was arguing with Kendrick Perkins, and now I'm bringing you right into that world. You're welcome. Now, listen. (laughs) Now, listen. Um, The Warriors, look, Wiggins shot it much better than I thought he would this year. And Mm -hmm. and the Warriors are looking good at a time where the rest of the Western Conference, as I mentioned, is not looking good. But I I still don't believe they have enough enough shooting. They're dangerous in a play-in. But I don't think that the Jazz or the Suns or a team like that needs to lose sleep about the Warriors. How do you see them in the, pl- in the postseason coming up? Mm-hmm. Well, look, one thing I like about Kendrick Perkins, one thing we have in common is that we destroy you on your Knicks cold take. So I kind of live so, vicariously through KP take is funny, when I watch him on cold take take you out every day. So congratulations to him on his deal. With the Delusional. Warriors, look, no, they're not fearing me in a series, yeah. in, a, in a one or two game playoff. Yeah, you never know. The chef could get hot. He's been cooking so far. They won four straight, six and one in May. As you said, Wiggins is starting to come around. But listen, you know, they, they miss Clay. Draymond's not putting fear in anybody. I don't think the Warriors are, are uh, somebody that you need to worry about in the postseason. But in the play-in, I think it'll be good for the league. Obviously, they want the ratings, and they want to see Steph go in and, and get hot to a 40-point game. So that might be good for them. But long-term, they're, they're going to be a quick out. You know what's going to be crazy about the Warriors going forward, though? They're still a destination yeah. for free agents. Um, Steph Curry's still going to be great. Clay is coming back. <laughs> and now yeah. they have draft capital yeah. and Wiseman. And Wiggins, Wiggins on yeah. that contract, suddenly it's like a best case scenario for them. If they keep him, they have a guy who can play as a fourth wheel. He'd be great, but you might be able to get something for him. He can yeah. defend yeah. and he can score. He can shoot from the outside. Like I'm with you. Pick. Warriors ain't nothing right now, but damn going yeah. forward. They could, they could put it back together. 
Yeah, they could be built for the present and the future. They have to, they're going to have the Timberwolves pick. That's going to be a lottery pick. They'll have Huge. their own pick, which could be a lottery pick. You got Clay coming back, one of my favorite players in the league for sure. Uh, so, yeah, I think for the future, they're set up pretty nicely, just like the Knicks. Now, listen, you just go put a tie on now. You, she- you she- shear down the beard a little bit. We'll see if we, we'll see if we can't get you, know you a what? real job. Listen, yes. You could argue it's the tie that, that makes your Knicks take so terrible on TV. It's, it, you're losing oxygen to your brain, Max. Every great, day you go on this Knicks show and, and you're moving the goalposts. If they don't win the first round, it's a failure. If they don't win the Laker game, it's it's not a championship for That's them. Right. I get right. DMs all the time from Knicks fans. CP, Max is going off the rails again. From he who? hasn't learned. From who? He has not learned. From Knicks fans. What? Knicks fans yeah. have brain damage. Believe me, I was with, I was one of you once. <laughs> I used to be. I, I look back and go, why was my brain so damaged? Damage. What was the matter with me? All right, listen, CP, we'll talk yeah, again next yeah. week. I appreciate you coming on. CP, the franchise, Knicks Fan TV, on the Goodyear Hotline, helping you discover the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. <laughs>